Okay, let's turn on. So we'll wait just a minute or two. I see people joining, so people okay. who are trying to get in. We're just bringing the phone a little closer. Well, then we can mute it while we're not talking. Yeah. He's down. I'm gonna let you set up. Okay. Okay. Let's back up. Okay. You can't see it. That's what I'm saying. What's the? Can we tape it up? Like fold it over. There's nothing on there with tape. I was just making sure it was on tape. MGH versus Sweet, let's see, they keep that up there. Dr. G. All right, we're good. All right, you're good? We're good. So, hello, good afternoon, and welcome. Uh, my name is Kathleen O'Sullivan Fortin, and I am on the board of directors of ALD Connect. And I'm happy, I'm proud, I'm honored to be part of this panel today. Um, today, we're going to talk about mastering the pediatric MRI experience, how to's and helpful hints for making the best out of the MRI monitoring process. Um, this actually came out of a discussion um, for um, newborn screening and asymptomatic boys that ALD Connect um, hosts every month. And we were so pleased to be able to um, make this come alive and really bring the experts to the table. First, I'm just gonna introduce who's on our panel today. Um, we have Katie Weagle, who's a child life specialist and many other things at Mass. <laughs> we have Shannon Kennedy, who's inter an interventional radiology nurse. And we have Lindsay Gui Guidaboni, um, <laughs> neuro technologist. <laughs> I was nervous about saying that. You, one. you did good. <laughs> we also have <laughs> our own Tara Meady, who is an ALD mom and also a nurse, so that we have, we're nursed up. We have all the heroes here. Um, so I think we're going to start with Tara. And I am going to pull up her slides. So, one moment, bear with me, folks. Oh, are the slides there? Yep. All right. Oh, different there. slides. Oh, there you go. There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara Meady. Um, my son, Brody Meady, the little guy in the picture, um, was diagnosed at newborn screening here in Connecticut um, back in 2016. He is now four and a half. Um, he has adrenal insufficiency. His big brother, Finn, in the picture does not have ALD. Um, Brody has been getting MRI since he was a little guy. We go to Mass General. We see Dr. Eichler. Um, Brody, at this point, has had nine MRIs. He just had his ninth MRI in November. Um, he's had so many because he did have a little thing that they were following. So we were going every three months. So he's kind of become a pro at this point at four and a half. Um, so Kathleen, you can do the next picture. Um, this is MRI day. Um, we try to make it a family affair, which I think makes, um, his big brother Finn feel kind of important. Um, so since he was little, I've always done like a special t-shirt for him. Um, I've bought t-shirts. So you'll see in some of the slides, special t-shirts, special jammies. Um, you could go to the next one, Kathleen. Um, so the night before the MRI, we try to probably pretty much the week before we start preparing Brody that it's MRI week. Um, we're going to Mass General. His brother gets very excited. Um, before COVID, we used to spend the night, so we'd always get a hotel room that had a pool so that they had something fun to do. We tried to stay at pretty much the same hotel to kind of keep it consistent. Um, and then the night before we read this book called Tom's MRI Space Adventure. I found it on Amazon. Um, and Brody loves a bit because now he thinks he goes in a spaceship. And the people at Mass General have been awesome about it because the nurses will talk about what's he gonna see when he's in space, even the anesthesiologists. 
Um, so he's always like figuring out what he's going to see when he goes in the machine. Um, so I think it really helps because we talk about it so much going into it. Um, we also let Brody pick out a special snack that he's going to have for after the MRI. Um, I get him a special juice box, which I'll show you afterwards, um, that he gets to pick out. It's like got little special heads. So he gets to pick that out. So we try to do special stuff to kind of make him, um, you know, kind of feel like, okay, this is, this is okay. This is doable. Kathleen, you can do the next one. Oh, Kathleen, you froze. Okay. So here are some of just the pictures of Brody with his different shirts. So the Hulk one was after a particular MRI where he woke up not a happy camper. So he came back with the Hulk shirt, just to, you know, a little funny. Um, so we always have him in a stroller. I know he's getting big, but it does help because after the MRI, he's a little loopy. So it definitely helps to have a stroller to kind of lock him in um, and help him kind of get out. Um, but those are some of the pictures of Mass General. You could do the next one. Did it advance? No. Oh, there he is. So um, on the left, so since a young age, I kind of got lucky because someone in the family is a nurse anesthetist. So we've been able to get our hands on masks. I have taken some from Mass General just for um, the boys to play with, kind of get used to it. Um, Brody likes to put it on his dolls or stuffed animals. Um, and then at Mass General, we have an amazing team. Um, we're very fortunate. They make um, MRI day not as stressful. So before the MRI, Brody gets to pick his lip smacker, which is, you know, all the boys love. And usually when my son Finn before COVID could come, he used to help pick out the lip smacker. And the nurses are great because they include his big brother too. Um, so he gets to pick out his flavor that he'll get to smell. And then they have tons of stickers he gets to pick out and he gets to decorate his mask, which he thinks is the coolest. Um, and his big brother also thinks it's super cool. So he usually helps out and helps him pick out his stickers. Um, you can go to the next one. So that is just like my sister had gotten that for Brody for one of his MRIs because we do call it this spaceship. Um, so that was his cape that he was going to blast off in um so we do try to make it you know fun for him and he thinks he's you know pretty cool and special you go to the next one there's brody so with covid you know we've been using masks for his stuffed animals so that's his elephant that he brings at every mri since he was a baby um he also has a little uh, elephant blanket that he also brings to every mri so we kind of keep it a little consistent just so that you know, this is his MRI buddy, um, Ellie, I think he calls it. Um, and the shirt he's wearing was one of his space shirts that I got. So I, you know, I sometimes try to, I mean, these kids grow out of clothes so much. So just have a little special something kind of makes it, he feels kind of special. You go to the next one. There he is with one of his zebra face masks. Um, he liked that one. Um, the other thing we always do too, is we always, um, get him a truck afterwards from the gift shop. Um, the gift shop loves us. Um, so his brother likes it too, but it's just something special every six months now for him to get something special. So his brother loves it too, because he gets to pick it out. So then he feels like he's involved in the process and Brody has something to look, look forward to. Then on our way home, we've kind of kept it a routine where we usually stop at the same restaurant. Um, with COVID it's changed, but we do try to do a special dinner afterwards for him, kind of make it a whole family affair. Um, and then when he's in the MRI, you know, we take Finn to breakfast this way. He feels like he gets some special time. Um, that's it, Kathleen. I don't know if you want to sh show me. So this was the kind of cup I was talking about. They have all these like cool juice boxes. So it's apple juice. So I always let him pick out a special head. Um, he usually doesn't drink before the MRI. I know they say you could do, we do the early ones. So like five, I think he could stop drinking. He never asks. So he usually just drinks it afterwards, but I have it just in case. Um, this was the book, um, I was telling about, you can find it on Amazon. It's pretty cool. It has a nurse in here, which Brody was very unhappy is not, does not look like Bob. He told me, um, from Mass General, um, and the other important thing too is so Brody does have adrenal insufficiency. So just a tip um, for moms. Um, 
Sometimes if the doctor, the adrenal, um, if your endocrinologist is, isn't at the hospital, they have to send the order for steroids. And sometimes that gets lost in translation. So I always ask the endocrinologist for a copy of the orders. Um, and in, when you're down by MRI, sometimes you have bad service. So I always take a picture of the orders. This way it's on my phone, no matter what. Um, this way, I, they, the anesthesiologists have had to ask me for the order. So I always have it as a picture. Um, so I think that's kind of a helpful tip too. That's my story. I love it <laughs> so much. I, I, I love um, that he wishes Bob was in the book. Don't we all? <laughs> Um, but that's a good segue to our next group. I'll, we'll do questions at the end because I see things coming into the chat already. Um, but again, uh, to pass it over to really the all-star crew from Mass General, um, like Tara, my son has gone through, at this point, dozens of MRIs at Mass Gen. And it's really, uh, they, he as well, he's now he's a teenager, but he still looks forward to MRI day. So uh, we thought maybe they could tell us how, how the magic happens. So take it away, ladies. Um, hi, it's Katie again, and Shannon and Lindsay. Um, so we uh, thought uh, we would just kind of share what our process is here at MGH, and then kind of maybe give, just like Tara kind of did at the end there, some helpful tips on how to prepare when you're, because not everyone's coming to MGH, just things that would be great to do in preparation for a visit to a hospital um, for the MRI. Um, feel free to jump in with questions if needed. Um, but um, so I'll let um, Shannon start because uh, we'll start with the anesthesia process first, if that's okay. Um, so we'll do anesthesia route first, kind of how our system has been developed and works for anesthesia. Um, we get an order from Dr. Eichler or Katie Becker um, in for the MRI. And if it's something that requires anesthesia, Shannon, Bob, Deb, one of our nursing team members takes it over from there and reaches out to family um, to schedule it. And then yeah. uh, Shannon talk about that part. First off, before I go any further, Tara, you nailed that. Yeah. I mean, seriously, <laughs> if we could honestly have parents like yourself, I mean, you guys, honestly, it's a definitely a team effort, a team sport, and I really mean it. Um, because um, without you guys, like, it's, you know, we're, we're a team back there together, and, and it just was wonderful, Tara. You did awesome. You nailed it, and what a good mom you are. Um, it's, you. it's really neat to see. Um, so, yeah, so like Kitty was saying, um, once we know that the child requires anesthesia, we kind of take over from the, the nursing point of view and make that contact with the family. And um, let's be honest, you guys know your kids best, so... We go through it and um, we make sure that the safety is the first thing and that makes sure all the answers and all the questions are answered um, and really kind of go through the day, the whole process, like, um, because we're not sure really where, how much you guys know as far as like mask induction versus IV induction and, you know, even that the fact that you have that option. Or, you know, maybe the MLA cream, you know, calling your provider, your primary care to see if you can get some MLA cream to place prior to. Certain little things, obviously, there's tricks and everything you can, as parents, um, that you can do um, to, you know, advocate. Um, and you wouldn't, unfortunately, really know a lot of this without, you know, having this discussion. Because prior to all this, I'll be honest, I didn't know, you know, like these little tricks. So... Um, definitely like what Tara was uh, showing with the mask, um, those lip smackers are key. And she's absolutely right. Girls, boys, all, I mean, especially in this situation, the boys, they love it even more than when I'm with the girls. So um, we have all the flavors. So you could, as a parent, you know, it would be really helpful like what Tara did. Maybe get some lip smackers if you can ahead of time and kind of play with that or have them smell the different flavors and kind of talk about, oh, which one you like and um, because Katie can go into this much further, but their main goal right now is play. So you kind of have to, like, the astronaut, love it. Like, you are right. We're in that spaceship, and I'm right in there with you, and we're making this happen. So you kind of have to get the team on board, and unfortunately, hopefully, that the nurse on the phone can kind of ask these questions. But, you know, I'm at Mass General, and I'm very fortunate to be with this team. Like, it's, I couldn't do it without them, but I know that's not necessarily everywhere. Um, 
So on that sake, like I think doing things ahead of time as parents, I know it's a lot on you guys, but I think it really can make a difference. Um, for everyone involved. So like I said, the lip smacker, if you can get your hands on a mask, not everyone has, you know, I know a nurse anesthetist in the family, but um, we'll give them to you. And then um, as far as like, yeah, call in the primary care for that numbing cream that just works, even if it's mentally, it works great. Um, and like you said, the stress dose of the steroids, absolutely right, taking that picture, um, those type of things. Um, what else can we talk about here? Shannon, can I just ask, um, for people who aren't at Mass General, how, what do you do with the lip smacker? Great, great. Yeah, exactly. Stop me at any point. Yeah, so the lip smacker... Take this to totally. their, wherever they are. Totally. So the mask that we were talking about that Tara had shown earlier, they smell awful um, without anything. And so those masks are used for... Um, inhalation gases, they're hooked up to the anesthesia machine. And there's a balloon on the other side. Some people like will draw faces on it. And the goal is to inhale and you want to blow up that big balloon. And you're getting that um, anesthetic to fall asleep. The get the mask, if we put you can put on like, I don't know, strawberry flavored, any flavor that the kids like and it kind of, you know, pun intended on this, but it masks the scent. You know, um, it, it really does. It does a great job. It kind of um, distracts the kids. And it's like, oh, I kind of did that. I was part of this. Like, and you're part of the team. Um, and like you said, having the brother or siblings or family members, like I'll even have mom or whoever's with them, dad, a sibling smell it too. Kind of like, oh, what do you think of this? And involve them. Um, but what we do is we take the lip smacker and we spread it all inside, just like you would do on your lips, but really go to town, like Mimi style all over the mass and then now when you have the mass hooked up with it going to the machine you can say all right now we're we're going getting ready to go up to space and you know that's blowing up and they're getting it so it's really just helpful it distracts them i find and it does get rid of that icky smell was that i don't know if that answered your question awesome and then just to clarify emla is the numbing cream Correct. So Emma's a numbing cream. It comes in a little, um, yeah, like almost a, like um, a tube. Neosporin. Yeah, like a neos. It almost looks like the size of a neosporin tube, mm -hmm. and um, you can get it from your primary care. We have it here. It takes about a half hour to work. It's a white um, substance, like a milky cream that you would just. What I would suggest, as long as the primary care is okay with, the, you know, you getting it. Um, Placing it, um, the cream, it's like a lotion based almost, um, right kind of in spots for where the IV might go. So in the ACs, what we call right in the elbow areas here, on the hands, um, and it just numbs up the area. It takes a half hour to work, um, but usually we have great results with it. Um, and if anything, like I said, the preparation before, like the men mental component of it is huge too. The MLA is great to use is if there is um, the possibility of an IV induction. So if we have to do an IV induction, we offer either EMLA or a Sonera patch, which has the same quality to it, um, to help numb the area. Correct. So for us, our primary um, way of induction is with a mask. Um, but if the hospital you're going to doesn't give that option, um, some don't, then using the EMLA cream or a Sonera patch um, can also be very helpful. There's a lot of times where the kids will prefer to actually get an IV instead of the mask because sometimes when they have the anesthesia so young, the mask is actually traumatic for them. So as they get older, they will prefer an IV placement and then they can go to sleep a little bit quicker without the mask. Absolutely. That is definitely something as um, the uh, ALD kiddos come in more frequently, as you were saying, how many scans these guys have already had. Um, we try and start to give them choice and control whenever they can have it. And so the option of having a mask induction versus the IV induction, if they're a little bit older and can articulate that, um, we definitely give them that choice to do that for sure, like Lindsay said. Mm -hmm. um, the also like using the lip smackers or any kind of scented chapstick for the mask is uh, a great way to do what we refer to as medical play. Um, it helps them become familiar with the mask prior to having it essentially placed on their face by the doctor. So they have more control over it. They can check it out. Um, Pre-COVID, we actually let them do the scenting themselves, but now no one's allowed to touch anything. 
Um, so we sent it and handed it over to them. Um, the decorating of the stickers is also just another way for them to yeah. have hands-on experience with it. Um, often the kids want to run around and show their parents and make them practice and stuff. So it's kind of a, a simple way to help make the mask a little less scary when it's first placed onto your mouth or your nose and your mouth. Right. And like Tara was saying, even like if they have like a favorite stuffed animal or a favorite, you know, lovey, whatever, you know, you want to call it, you can bring that. I mean, we allow it here. You can definitely obviously... Um, I would suggest, like, when you contact the hospital or when you're in contact with, you know, the hospital you're having the MRI, you can ask these questions. Like, first off, do you guys do mask inductions versus IV inductions? Is that our choice? Or so that way you know, okay, they do mask inductions. I better get that lip balm, you know. Or, um, but what I'm saying about the lovey is that if you bring the lovey or the stuffed animal with you, we can, a lot of times, like, Katie will put the mask on the, the teddy bear or whatever, to kind of involve everyone or to say, okay, you know, so it kind of, that control is huge. I'll be honest, it's not really, yeah, this isn't about pushing meds or anything for me. It's honestly, it's about, uh, you know, making that trust and that uh, relationship with um, the little guy as well as the family. It's huge. It's, um, and so what you guys do beforehand is huge. It's night and day difference when, a child's going to sleep that's actually touched the mask prior to coming in versus it see, them seeing it for the first time. And from an uh, MRI safety standpoint, if you are bringing a stuffed animal with you, point. we usually will let them bring it into the room for when they're going to sleep. Make sure it does not have a battery or if it talks or lights up, the magnet can affect that and then it might not be talking after. So that's our suggestion on our end. Just make sure it's a stuffed animal without a battery. The other thing that's nice about Mass General is that we, one parent could actually go in, which we found out not all places do. Um, so I actually get to have Brody on my lap while he's blowing up the balloon, which we talk about a lot. Um, and like I said, the nurses and anesthesiologists are amazing, whatever we're talking about. I think last time Brody had dinosaurs on his pajamas. Yeah. So the anesthesiologist was talking about, oh, what's your favorite dinosaur? And he thinks that he was like, I'm going to see dinosaurs in space today. Um, and the other nice thing is once um, he is asleep, the everyone helps me lay him down and they always make sure even through COVID mom, give him a kiss, which for us as a mom, like having to watch your son go to sleep like that is traumatic. But um, at least like everyone is there and tells us, you know, give him a kiss and then I leave and cry. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it's just nice and comforting for a mom standpoint that I got to, you know, watch him go to sleep and then I got to give him a kiss. Our team here at MGH, uh, just in terms of the team that would care for the kiddos as they come in, consists of obviously our nursing staff um, who uh, specialize in working with children. Um, Shannon does actually both adult and children, child care. Um, we have our MRI technologists uh, for our patients who are having scans for adrenal leukodystrophy. Um, we actually have uh, specialized PD MRI techs. Lindsay is actually one of our techs that has worked very hard with Dr. Caruso, who most uh, heard his name, um, and Dr. Eichler to come up with really great protocols to use for evaluation and everything. So this is the one behind, one of the ones behind <laughs> it. Um, but, um, and then we have our, so we have our technology team, obviously our anesthesia team often work with a resident, an anesthesia resident as well, or a nurse anesthetist. And then I'm usually involved with the non-anesthesia component because we have a a decent volume of kiddos that come in who don't need anesthesia, and so that's kind of my role uh, as well. So um, when you come to us, that's kind of the group that you come to. Um, MGH um, has a very family-centered care focus, um, so we do definitely encourage parents or any caregiver um, to be part of the treatment and part of the day as much as possible um, within their own comfort levels. Um, I think it's also good to know that we don't have the expectations of parents staying during inductions. It can be hard for some families and parents or caregivers. It's actually something that they really can't do. Um, and so that's fine too. And so we just kind of give you those options and choices here at our particular hospital. Um, but as you did say, Tara, not um, every hospital has that um, policy. And unfortunately that's the policy of the hospital. But we thought we could give you some ways to 
prepare or kind of plan for something like that if um, after talking with the hospital, learning about the anesthesia approach, you find out that you, parental presence during an induction is not possible. Some of the things that maybe you can do um, to help make it, your child feel like you're there with them. Um, so sometimes having the stuffed animal that's MRI compatible and allowed to go into MRI, um, you know, taking a picture of the family or the parent and kind of attaching it to the shirt uh, or onto the stuffed animal or making a photo book that they can take with them. And so um, I worked at another hospital where parent induction was not allowed at that point. Um, and so I encouraged photo books, like just the, back then it was, everyone had regular cameras. Um, so just printing out some pictures and then putting them into a little photo album and then the nurse um, and the uh, anesthesiologist actually used that during the induction and kind of like had the kids tell them the story of their family, who things were. And so while they can't physically be there, they're still there in another in another kind of aspect of it. Um, yeah, or if they have like what Katie was saying, um, and don't let her fool you, even though she says she does only the non-anesthesia cases, she, I'm asking her questions 24-7, like, so it, we're all involved together on it, I, in all honesty. And I am working, I will, I promise, I'm not Bob yet, but I'm getting up there, you guys, so listen now. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but no, like the littlest things that um, Katie was saying, as far as that goes, um, definitely helps. And I lost my train of thought here. What else was I? I think some other there? things to know too is um, like Lindsay will touch upon this. Mm -hmm. I think now um, just about like clothing and all that. Yeah. So first off, I like to let parents know that there is no radiation in MRI. I know when people hear imaging, they immediately think my patient is getting radiation, my child is getting radiation, and every time it's another scan. There's no radiation. We use radio frequencies and it will not harm your kid during the scan. Um, also, I like to tell people if they're coming in, there are some types of clothes that actually have metallic fibers in them, believe it or not. Um, so dressing your child in a pair of sweatpants with no metal or a cotton t-shirt is usually best. Um, and believe it or not, Lululemon and Under Armour, any dry fit material can actually have metallic fibers. So then we'll have to change them and that can easily get them a little bit more worked up as well. Um, also letting them know we're gonna do a metal detector test. So kind of like when they're going to the airport, if they've been to the airport, because a lot of times people will see our wand and the kid will immediately get nervous. But what we'll do is if you prepare them that they're gonna have a metal detector test, and also mom or dad will have the metal detector test as well, will actually let the child help do mom or dad before they go into the room. Um, I think on the MRI standpoint, having the specialized techs and nurses is really huge with these families coming in for so many scans. Seeing the familiar face, getting to know the children, knowing that you're gonna have the same radiologist reading the scans and checking the scans is huge. And that's why I think it's just so, so great to have this team here. I think, um, too, when you're preparing for an MRI, again, not at MGH because everyone doesn't come here, um, but this is where we were talking about the preparation component for families, just really encouraging you to reach out to the MRI department or the nursing staff, whoever's coordinating the visit for you, and find out what are their policies and procedures. Do the children have to change for the MRI? Um, what does that look like? You know. Um, as much detail as you need in order to prepare your child or for you to feel prepared and comfortable, you should ask. Um, we Medical care providers on our end, we don't start to get annoyed until like call 14 and then we're <laughs> starting to like put little stars in your chart like, eh. Um, but you definitely are encouraged to ask those questions. You know, you're, you're trying to educate yourself. This is a long journey and a long road ahead of you. And so if it starts off great and strong and positive, then it will continue to hopefully be that way. So definitely reach out to the people scheduling everything. Find yeah. out what um, the, the yeah. rules of MRI are. Are parents allowed during the induction process? Yeah. Um, what type of anesthesia do they use? Are they using like a propofol, yeah. um, IV infusion? Are they using gases the whole time? Um, what kind of medications do they give after anesthesia? I know you talked about the steroid dose, but some kids need like a, a Zofran because they get nauseous. Um, 
Yeah, Get perfect. <laughs> no, you're right. And then also another thing too, um, blood work. I don't know. Everyone's different. Um, but even what Tara was saying, like if the orders can come in from every which way. Um, but honestly, like um, if there's blood work needed or um, do, um, we can definitely, and a lot of hospitals should be able to do it in all honesty. It's more of just kind of being that advocate. So you might have to call beforehand to whatever doctor is ordering it to make sure it's in the system and also have a number that you can reach them that morning. Because if it's not in the system, we can't see it. We have a number to reach them. Because when we do, when they do fall asleep, if we do the mask induction, after they fall asleep, we here put an IV in here um, for maintenance to have them stay asleep um, with propofol um, the majority of the times. And at that point, when we're placed in the IV, we can easily get blood work at the same time. So it might be just helpful so you don't have to go back or go to a different lab or clinic to have that done. You can kind of have it done already there. Um, so you can ask, make sure those orders are in. Um, the other thing that Katie mentioned about uh, just with COVID going on, just it's helpful, I think, if you call a hospital and find out about visitors, like can I have two parents there, one parent, um, and how that all works, and, you know, even can I go into the MR machine and recovery area, are we allowed – Am I going to be in the recovery when my child's still sleeping, or am I going to have to wait until they get settled and the child's awake already? Because um, here, honestly, we roll right out of the MRI machine, um, and we're finding um, the caregiver right outside the door. Mm -hmm. And we bring them right along, and they're still sleeping. Yep, yep. Tara's right there, and we're, still there. we're wheeling them all together, and we all go back as a unit. But I do know that some places – only allow like one person back some places you're not even allowed until after the fact so I think even to prepare yourself as a, a caregiver um, that would be probably helpful I think that would be helpful um, because I kind of attribute to the whole dog on the leash you know if the parents anxious it's just going to travel right down to the child and yeah. so you kind of have to prepare both ends and um, and I don't know how you do it, so I, I definitely I can give you all the advice, but easier said than done, in all honesty. I can only imagine. And also, we tend to give, more times than not, we give um, MRI contrast during these exams. Each hospital, not every hospital gives the same type of contrast. We call it gadolinium. So if you're interested in the type of contrast that the hospital is using, that is another question to ask before. There is documents online, you can read about it. We actually will hand handouts to the parents that describe the type of contrast that we use. That way, if they have any questions, they can address it to us beforehand. Um, there are some times that we don't give contrast every time a child comes in. Somebody with a positive gene, but no seen lesion on an exam, we will do it every other exam. Contrast one time, not contrast the other. That's just saving the child an injection of contrast. So we do use doterum, um, which is a cyclical contrast, which gets out of the system a lot quicker than some of the other contrasts at other hospitals. Um, some other things, too, um, again, talking about hospital policies, about parental presence and stuff. In the age of COVID, even, even here at Mass General, um, when we were in our, our first days of lockdown back in March, pretty much through June, um, parents were not allowed in the ORs or in any um, induction because it was considered an aerosol exam. So whether the child is having MRIs, any, any exam hospital-wide that involved the use of anesthesia, um, parents were not allowed to be part of that induction for, for a while. Um, so that's definitely changed now again. We've kind of moved back to allowing the parents. Usually we have one parent present. Um, in the room, but just keep that in mind. Just it seems, you know, it's the COVID precautions aren't really going anywhere anytime soon, it seems. Um, so just ask them, hospital, what their policies are on that. Um, every hospital has visitor policies in place now, at least around our area. Um, they're fairly stringent. Um, we currently now allow two adults. Um, doesn't have to be the caregiver per se, but it's just two adults to accompany the pediatric patient. Um, no other siblings, no other children are permitted in the hospital. Um, we have a check-in point, and you are actually asked if there are two adults with you. One has to return to the vehicle with the other kids. So definitely, that can be very stressful if you're coming and you're worried about so many other things. And um, so that might be an important thing to know and, and figure out before heading to, to the hospital. Do they have a mask 
policy. Is your child able to wear their own masks? We have kids who have some tactile issues, and so putting on a hospital mask that we issue can be a bit hard for them. Um, just things like that, just being aware of them ahead of time is very, very helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we could keep going on, but are there any, <laughs> any questions or something yeah, more specific rant. to focus on? <laughs> questions. So I'll just, um, a few have come in. Um, one is um, just to circle back to um, the induction and blowing the balloon. Not everyone's heard of the balloon or they're not there during the induction. They're at, a, they're at a place where they're not allowed to be there, so they don't understand what the balloon is. If you can just explain that. Yeah, definitely. So the mask, I should remember. So the mask like Tara was showing, or I should say Brody was showing us. <laughs> um, the mask there, um, there is a end piece that's connected to, like a tubing that is connected to the anesthesia machine. And that, um, so the mask is used for inhalation gases. So sebal fluorine, nitrous oxide, um, gases to make you fall asleep. And that mask, so here you would go after Lindsay and we did the whole, you know, scan and making sure we're safe for MRI. We would enter into the room. A lot of times we'll have the caregiver present and we'll kind of sit on the table together. We may rock back and forth and have mom, dad, whoever the caregiver is right there so you're safe. We'll have the, um, the mask. A lot of times if we try to read what the child is, you know, is developmentally as far as or mentally. If they can hold the mask, some of these kids are amazing. Like Brody, a lot of times will just do this for us. Like, so, um, and she's showing the mask there. Um, but it can be, I'll be honest, guys, it can be barbaric looking um, because you're putting a mask on a child and if you're, depending on how prepared or even if, no matter how much you prepare, it still can be a little, you know, you're, you're forcing this on their face and it's just not the best thing to witness as a, as a parent. Um, but um, so the, the tubing um, that Shannon was describing yeah. goes, is, attached to the anesthesia machine that the gases are hooked up to and that the anesthesiologist is monitoring and, and adjusting the volume. So that tubing is connected to the filtration system that processes out the gases. Attached to that is this, what looks like a balloon. Um, the ones that you used to like blow up and tie an elastic band around and kind of like bounce. I'm yeah. not sure if that's ringing a bell with anyone, <laughs> um, but it kind of looks like that. It's a thicker rubber bag. Um, there are various sizes and colors based on the age of the patient. Um, and so that tubing, when the patient's breathing in the gas and they exhale, it blows the balloon up. And then when they inhale, it retracts it. And so what we were saying about blowing up the balloon, we encourage them to see if they can Take pop you. our balloon. Mm -hmm. Can you um, blow it up? No one's done it before. Yeah. Um, can you do it? Or some doctors like to draw on them. Um, so they draw and they make funny faces, like, can you make the face do something funny or oh, blow it up so I can make the mouth or blow it up so I can do the nose. So that balloon is, the purpose of the balloon is really for the anesthesia equipment, but it's our thing that we have the kids focus on or try to focus on when they can to distract them. Um, but also it causes them to breathe in the gases a lot faster. Yeah. <laughs> They're taking bigger yeah. breaths in yeah. um, and expelling them. And so they do fall asleep faster. Mm -hmm. So that's what Shannon was talking about with the mask and the tubing and stuff. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And as soon as they're asleep, we immediately put them on our MRI safe monitors. So they're immediately monitored as soon as we lay them down. Yeah. That's great. Another question is, um, should, pac should patients consider doing a practice run? I don't know if that's available or even. Um, I, I don't know if that's available at all hospitals is a great question. Um, specifically here at MGH, we do not offer that. I do know other hospitals. Um, I feel like larger children's hospitals do that. Um, they actually have MRI suites um, that are set up. They actually have kid kitty scanners, they're called, and they have special dolls that will go in the scanner and like light up on the monitor. We do not offer that here at our hospital. Being a children's hospital within a very much larger adult facility, we just unfortunately don't have that ability. But again, when you, you're calling about the appointment, that's a great question to ask. Sometimes they do do those trial runs. What I often suggest to parents is, I know this sounds crazy, but sometimes having the kids lay under like a, a coffee table 
um, if they're having non-anesthesia, if they're awake, um, laying under that table. Or um, I've had a couple of patients recently who really love those um, collapsible tunnels that you can run through or the kids can crawl through. They use them in dog agility training, too, <laughs> um, is the yeah. other way of describing Actually, it. That's like a perfect, yeah. Um, it's like so a, a lot of yeah. kids will lay in that, and so the parents will have them lay in that, or I suggest they lay in that, make them comfortable, um, find some noise, MRI, examples of the MRI sound, and just have it playing on the outside and just practice laying still. Um, sometimes you can do that. You can create your own MRI scanner at home, sometimes a little um, using simple things. Um, just taking like a solo cup um, and cutting off the back side of it so it's open and just using it and having a little Barbie doll or a toy or some animal, you know, some little toy animal, whatever. Your G.I. Joe guy, guy whatever. Yeah. Practice sliding in and out. So there's lots of little tricks that you could do to like help prepare them a little bit more for what they'll see. Um, and the simple thing of just finding a picture online of an MRI camera is sometimes just enough for them too. And that book is huge, too, mm -hmm. the book. And honestly, as long as it's MRI safe, like, we'll accept, if you want to dress up as an astronaut, we're going to space, <laughs> and we're all dressing up. So it's helpful out. Or if you like, you know, if, if your favorite song is, I don't know, Jingle Bells, we're going to all be singing there's that, a, you know. There's a lot of singing in the MRI Absolutely. department. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not the best, but, you know, thankfully we're they're right. going off to sleep, yeah. so we're good. But, yeah, like, and that's helpful to know from a nurse's point of view. I know it might sound, you know, but even when you do make that call. So is there anything like, can we sing or, you know, can we pretend or is there anything? What do you guys suggest? Like, do you guys pretend it's a certain thing? Because once you get those nurses and the team hooked on the same and you're all pretending that you're going or doing that, then you've got it, you know, and, and you can really do a lot um, with that so that the child really and the parents feel like you're all in it together and you're doing this and that trust, I think, really builds from that when you really, like, hone in on, you know, like, Brody wants to be an astronaut, so we're going to do that. And the next child might want to, you know, who knows, like, go into a tunnel or be a coal miner. I have no idea. But we'll, <laughs> we're going to make it work. But it's helpful to know that instead of kind of showing up and being like, so, you know, we're singing ABCs and it's not something that they're even into. You know, we try to relate to that. So any hints or anything, don't feel like you're throw it, just throw it all at the nurse and we'll... And, and, you know, then it's up to us to make that happen, too. Would you recommend that people write down some helpful hints or things about their kids? Yeah. Like if first time coming in and saying yeah. well, a little note, this is Brody, he likes the yeah. whole I, he wants I, I think Totally. Yeah, I know um, inpatient-wise, we actually have these giant posters that families can fill out. This is called All About Me. Um, you can actually find smaller. You don't have to make anything fancy, but I'm a template person. I need, like, a little form. Um, you can find them online on Google, just like All About Me papers, mm -hmm. um, and you can fill it out. It will tell them, like, my favorite color is, my stuffed animal's name is this. Yeah, like, I, I know we find just a little bit of information ahead of time is great just because, as Shannon's saying, it helps us to make a connection with the kids. Um, and kind of if we know ahead of time, too, sometimes we can prepare in advance. Like, we know we have the stickers, you know, the frozen stickers that they really love frozen. We have those stickers that can be put on the mask or um, we have, you know, dinosaur stuff or we have those things. So yes, it would be, it's helpful to have little bits of uh, information um, for sure. Don't bring a binder, but just like a yeah. <laughs> I also think you guys also prepare so well. Like I know we are talking about for Brody's next MRI, he thinks he could stay still enough that he doesn't have to go to sleep. So the nurses were amazing this last time because Brody brought it up. He thinks he could stay still like a mannequin. So like Bob got out the goggles and the tech put on a movie so he could actually see what it looks like. They put on the, so he actually got to, and Bob like sat and really talked to him a lot about like what he'd hear. Um, and the ANC, everyone kind of like coached him through it. And it was really nice because he kind of got a feel of, okay, I can do this. Um, mm -hmm. So you guys do such a good job too, even though like, we're not putting a stuffed animal through like getting like, you know, a before experience, like even our first MRI, we didn't know what to expect. Um, and I felt like everyone was so nice and welcoming and like very caring. And I didn't feel like, I mean, I was sad leaving my child, um, but I didn't feel like I felt good. Like I felt, all right, my child's safe. Like I got to see. Um, so even though like we didn't get to tour beforehand, like 
I wasn't scared. Like I felt very comfortable because everyone talked to me. The anesthesiologist was really good. Everyone explained to what was going to happen. Um, so it was really good experience because everyone was so like warm and caring. That's yeah. a good point. Um, we often get a lot of questions about when is the right time to transition? And I know it's different for every, every child, but maybe if you guys might wanna address some things to think about in terms of when it's time to transition away from anesthesia. And also what is the process for older kids? Because as we know, it's twice a year until, you know, your early yeah. or whenever your doctor decides is the right time. And then you go to annual. So um, creating an army of, you know, boys that are not afraid of the MRI and then follow up as they age out of pediatrics with their annual MRIs for life. Um, just what's the process or what do you, where do you go from there? Yep, that's a great question. I think um, a couple of things to consider is that um, all of M the MRIs for, our, at least our MRIs, I'm not sure about other hospitals, our um, protocols for our adrenal leukodystrophy kiddos are very lengthy. Um, whether you're having contrast or not, they're usually a minimum of an hour. Um, and so a good way of assessing uh, your child's like readiness, sometimes it's not necessarily the fear behind it. Everyone says they're fine, you know, put an iPad in front of them, they'll hold still. Well, yes, but they have to lay flat in a scanner with it making tons of noise, no motion whatsoever, no wiggling feet, those types of things. Um, so it's kind of, we encourage parents to think of it from that perspective. We can put movie goggles on, we can put music on, um, but the ability for that child to be still is the most crucial component of it. We can work through a lot of those other things um, and getting them ready, but the, the still part is the most important part. Um, we've had kids who are, you know, six years old and have been able to successfully complete a, a full ALD um, protocol. Um, we have had some kids that were not very good at completing it. Um, so it, it's, I guess it's hard for us to give an exact age per se. Um, it's definitely individual on the kids. Um, I think as they get older and they can articulate more, um, asking them, like Brody is clearly very interested in giving it a try. And so kind of starting to explore those options as they come in and they get a little bit older. Um, Sometimes we, you know, if you have it without the sleepy medicine, you don't have to come in with a hungry belly. You don't have to. Or you can go to hockey practice. Right. Right. You, say, you don't have to miss out on fun things right. later. Um, you yeah, know, to go to the shop and pick out your gift. Yeah, yeah. Can go, exactly. You can go get you that can, gift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, it's definitely very individually based, but I think as a parent or a caregiver, you should definitely judge it not so much on the fear factor because we can work through that with them um, or most of the time we can. Um, it's really the ability to be still. Um, keeping in mind that we, we are talking about movie goggles and stuff. We offer on one or, uh, a couple of our MRI scanners here, we have a DVD system that's MRI compatible. Um, that is not available at every hospital. Um, and so that is a huge resource that we have. Um, some, some hospitals have music to listen to. So when you're making that decision, see if there's distraction available during the MRI itself. If not, you know, what the expectations are, how lengthy is it? Um, can a parent remain in the room during an MRI? We allow a parent in the entire time for a non-anesthesia. Um, as Tara was saying, when patients are having anesthesia, parents are there until the kiddos are asleep and then they're let, asked to, um, we walk them out. Um, but one parent can stay in the whole time. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a helpful answer. Um, okay. <laughs> and it becomes more of like a team, correct me if I'm wrong, but like kind of a, like, I don't remember even talking to Tara, like, okay, what do you think? Like, so let's, and we, we're almost working it out. And I think, and that, I guess um, I, I take for granted how here, how we have the team. And because I feel like we're all kind of bouncing ideas off each other. It's, you know, and and trying to figure this out and trying to take the whole picture and really including family. And um, cause in the end, it's really their decision and trying to make that work. But for some of our patients, um, like for example, um, you know, patients who are coming from out of state or from a longer distance, um, the scanner we have to use for our imaging as Lindsay can attest to is mm -hmm. just, it's one particular scanner. 
Um, it's only available for anesthesia patients for kids on Wednesdays and Fridays and for non-anesthesia, it's Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And so if it's a kiddo that's traveling from California, Connecticut, um, they're not just next door or a couple towns away from Boston. It's not an easy comeback. Um, we might arrange for the kids to do a practice run on Tuesday with a backup anesthesia scan scheduled for the Wednesday. Um, and so that we give it a try and know that if it doesn't work out, then the, you know, you're not at a loss and you can come the next day. Um, you know, that's something that we can do um, whenever we have ample notice, mm -hmm. um, we can coordinate it that way. Or we could do, you know, a Thursday scan with a Friday, um, you know, back up. So some institutions may be willing to do things like that as well as the kids start to trial no anesthesia. Yeah, and we will never leave your child in the scanner for longer than they need to be. Yes. If they are moving during the pictures, we can see that come up and we can talk to a radiologist and make the decision to stop. Because if they're not going to be able to interpret the images, well, that it, it is. yeah, exactly. And so our, we will never let them stay in longer than they need to. Stay in longer too. And we also don't want to traumatize them. And so, you know, they may think everything's good and then they hear the noise of the scanner and the word claustrophobia is not something they know about, but all of a sudden they feel like things are very confining and being seven or eight don't have the words to articulate that, but are starting to yell and scream to get out. Like we want to avoid those situations or trying to push them through that if um, possible. So like Lindsay's saying, we, we kind of make that judgment call as we go. Yeah. Well, that's great. I know I've got a, my son, like I said, is a teenager and he very much enjoys those movie goggles. We, you know, we had a whole process built around MRIs when he was little. Um, kind of like Brody. And then now that he's older, you know, he used to, our big thing was we would stop at, this is so old fashioned sounding, at a red box on the way there. Huh. And movie he wanted to watch that of course wasn't too funny because he would be moving and laughing. Not too scary because you can't move, but something, you know, mellow in the middle that um, was a big thing. And I just wanted to bring up, cause I always like to bring this up that, um, my son, I've got a teenager and he has braces and we have worked oh, it out yeah. <laughs> that he has, um, he has ceramic brackets so that um, every time he gets all of his 24 plus MRIs, um, the day before an MRI, he goes to orthodontist, they take out the wire and the loops around the molars and they leave the brackets on because they're non-metallic ceramic and then the, right after we leave the MRI suite on Ellison 2 we get back in the car and we bomb over to the orthodontist and they are very kind and they put all the wires and brackets back and and uh kind of molar loops whatever they're called I can't remember um back on so just a little helpful hint for people who have young kids who will of it, who will eventually be older and will be needing MRIs um, that the orthodontist is not is, you know, can be a very friendly, helpful partner in this whole MRI, or they can do it, they can do a lot by um, those trays or metallic put in take out, you know, um, yeah, that's my little helpful hint for transitioning to, you know, yeah. Lindsay can explain too um, what the why braces or dental hardware or certain implants in the body can be a problem during MRIs. Mm -hmm. So with the MRI, it's a giant magnet. So anything metallic that the patient has either on them or inside them can show up in, on our images. And it actually looks like a black hole, like a big black dot over what we're trying to take pictures of. <laughs> So that's why, yeah. <laughs> that's <Right>. why <laughs> braces are trouble. And the type of magnet we use is called a three Tesla scanner, which means it's a very strong scanner. It gives us very high resolution pictures for these ALD kiddos. Um, it's the best images we can get. And the stronger the magnet, the bigger the black hole. So it's really helpful to be able to remove the braces. That's excellent. Yeah, it's, you know, there's a comment here that, yeah, bring everyone into the ALD team. 
Um, Tara, I wanted to ask, there's a question about the book that you use and if anyone has any other recommendations for kind of books or... There's another, so I looked on Amazon. There's one called, I think it's like Martin's MRI, but it was just, it didn't have the whole space theme, which is what we liked. There's also another one that just came out recently. I haven't read it yet. I didn't buy it yet. Um, I think it's called The Angry Donut, I want to say. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's called The Donut That, the donut that Roared. I think it's about a little boy who has a brain tumor um, and he wrote the book. So I'm actually interested in buying it, um, but I haven't purchased it yet. But those were the only three books that I've seen for children about MRIs. What was yeah, the, donut? Oh, the, donut, the donut that roared. And then there's one that's called like Martin's MRI. It just didn't look very colorful. Um, they didn't, and they didn't let you peek through. Um, this one I just liked because like they show the little boy going through the machine. I don't know if you can yeah. see. Um, and they just show like there's a one where he's got headphones on. He's obviously awake. He's a little bit older, um, but it showed like a lot with like the doctors over him. And I just thought, well, it's just it has just a lot more pictures, I think, than the other one. And what's the have, can you hold the cover up again? Tom's MRI Space Adventure by Leslie Coomer. And it's on Amazon. Great. Just and also, um, sorry, finding um, MRI resources or a lot of those types, very specific imaging resources is very difficult um, for educational purposes. So a lot of hospitals, um, if they have child life specialist teams, they have social workers on their teams, they may have created their own um, prep book specific to the hospital where it walks a, a child walking through, or sometimes they have created their own videos too. Um, so you might want to check that out as well with the hospital that you're you're headed to. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. You could ask, you know, when you talk to the nurse, hey, is there any videos to prepare my child or are there any pictures? Because Katie has here like um, laminated pictures, there's iPad. videos online, there's the iPad. So there's so many um, different little things that we have here. Um, but it would be helpful to know what, what the hospital has available if they have anything, um, you know, available for the child to see. That's great. Well, guys, I know we're coming to the end of our time and we have surprisingly answered all the questions as we've gone along. Um, I just wanted to know, does anyone have any, if you had a number one encouraging word or helpful hint to give people, what would that be? Tara, I'll start with you and then we'll... Oh, geez. Um, just, I think, preparing um, your child as much as possible. Um, I think kind of just, you know, the day of or the day before being like, hey, it's MRI day. Um, I think that causes a lot of stress. I think by we talk about it the whole week of, I think it really helps Brody. Like in the beginning, obviously, I mean, obviously he wasn't always a rock star. I mean, he one time ripped off the mask. I mean, he hasn't <laughs> always been cooperative. Um but I think now, like, just talking about it a lot, at first, you know, when I bring out the book, he'd be like, no, no. Um, but now I bring out the book, and he's like, oh, last time, he's like, let me read it to you. I was like, okay, you read it to me. <laughs> um, so I think just, you know, it gets him more comfortable. Like, he knows what's coming. He knows, you know, he's like, all right, I'm going to pick out my snack for afterwards. I know you're supposed to eat light, but Brody doesn't. Um, but, you know, it's kind of just, he has his own routine, so he kind of is comfortable with it. And I think also just bringing everyone, you know, the whole family also is kind of nice if you can. Um, having his big brother, like this last time we weren't going to bring um, Finn, and he's like, what do you mean? You have to bring me. And I'm like, but you're going to have to sit in the car. He's like, I, but I have to be there. And I was like, okay. So, you know, he wants to be part of the day too. And, you know, so I, that's why I took the picture of the mask. I sent it to Finn because he wanted to see what stickers Brody picked out. And the first thing you want to know is what flavor did Brody pick out? I wasn't there to help him smell. Um, so I think just like making it, you know, kind of, I mean, this is our new norm. So just making it, hey, we're going to Boston, you know, kind of make it comfortable for them so that they feel comfortable too. That's great. Katie or Shannon, Lindsay, I don't know who wants to go. Um, yeah, no, so uh, I think we were kind of like whispering over here well, about what we would say. Um, <laughs> but I think all three of us would agree and echo what Tara said. Really, I think the key is being the preparation in advance and being an advocate for your child. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to have that voice through your child. Um, and if you really need to be the pain in the butt parent, be the pain in the butt parent. I mean, it's, 
it's their kid, your kid, not ours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As we yeah. know, Kathleen. Um, no, <laughs> but I think that it's strong advocating and you know your child best. Um, and so providing helpful information. But at the same time, we know the medical side best. Mm -hmm. And so I think being an equal partnership and listening to what the staff and team having, helping your child is saying, but also just being prepared and advocating for your child, I think are the two big words we would, yeah. would say, ask the questions, um, find out the process, come prepared with your mm -hmm. list of medications, implants in the body, um, you know, those types of things, just really kind of doing your own research a little bit mm -hmm. would be the big things, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and just a little quick, when you care what you were talking about, um, Finn not being able to come this time around, um, this is something we're running into a lot and um, within the Child Life team here, um, we started really implement, implementing and using the FaceTime apps on our iPads or even creating Zoom meetings for the kids. <laughs> um, so like they're actually part of the prep so we log on, we get them on, um, we have decent Wi-Fi here. And so that was another thing we did. We create a meeting for the kids. And so they they enjoy that. We have them in the OR with them, you know, um, in the pre-op areas or inpatient in the bedsides and stuff. So oh, with awesome. technology and everyone going to telemedicine and all that, like that's a, a big thing that all of us can do too now. Because truthfully, we need Finn just as much as Brody does, so I'll be honest, because it makes the whole team. If one yeah. person is not there, if the routine's off, it really does throw it. And so yeah. really rely on, you know, and be that, like Kay said, be that nagger, because you know what? You're, if you're going to be going, I don't know everyone's situation, but if you're going to be going to the same hospital and work with the same team, mm -hmm. we will all see each other's true colors. You're going to have those days that you're yelling and we're yelling, yeah. whatever. But we're going to be able to know and we're going to get to, we look forward to seeing you guys, yeah. even though it's under these circumstances, but there's that bond. And, and um, be kind to yourself, too. Yeah. Um, each time you come is going to be different. You may be having a good day or a bad day. Let yourself feel those feelings. If you need to cry, cry. We'll have a tissue box waiting for you. Don't worry. We got that covered. But be kind to yourself yeah. as well. Give yourself some grace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, our time is coming to a close for now. Um, thank you, Katie, Shannon, Lindsay, and Tara for taking time out of a busy day um, and um, giving us this great like pearls of wisdom. Um, I've seen in the chat box, there have been questions about whether or not um, we're going to have additional follow-up resources. I will say this this webinar is being recorded and will be loaded up when it's ready onto our website. And also um, I, I'm gonna take a stab at putting together some helpful hints and highlights in a written something. So um, maybe we people can, things to think about uh, before their next MRI. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you, uh, those of you watching at home and have a good day, be safe. Bye, thank Kathleen. you, bye. bye. bye.